Welcome to this week's episode of Coffee with the Journalist brought to you by One Pitch. The guests on our show include some of the most notable journalists from the top U.S.-based publications who cover topics including technology, lifestyle and culture, health, science, consumer products, and business news. We discuss their role, the types of stories they cover, what their inbox looks like, and how they connect with sources. If you're an avid listener of this podcast, we'd love to hear from you. Leave us a review to share your thoughts about past episodes and help spread the word to new listeners. Today on Coffee with the Journalist, we're joined by Erica Wheelis, a commerce reporter for Digiday. Erica reports around content and commerce, including stories about platform shopping experiences, e-commerce data privacy, and tech's impact on e-commerce. Prior to joining Digiday, Erica was a journalist for Craig Newark Graduate School of Journalism at CUNY. During the episode, Erica tells us about her coffee upbringings, her fascination with social media platforms entering the e-commerce space, her proudest moments as a journalist, and more. Let's hear more from Erica now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Coffee with a Journalist. I'm Beck Bamberger, co-founder of One Pitch, and also BAM, an agency that represents all these crazy venture-backed technology companies. And today, maybe drinking coffee or not, we didn't even talk about that yet, is Erica Wheelis from Digiday. Erica, we're so excited to have you today. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I have I have some peppermint tea with me today, I, but I am a, a massive, I am a very confessed caffeine addict. I have to have one cup of coffee at least in the morning, or I will have like that ice pick headache between my eyebrows oh, by like 2 p.m. No. So. Oh, I'm a one latte a day person, but I haven't gotten to a point where I go, oh my God, I'm, I'm physically feeling it. Oh, that's bad. It must be a very strong cup of coffee. Yeah, I guess it, I guess it is. My mom, I think, started me and she was like, okay, start drinking coffee and start with just black coffee. And I think maybe it comes from her. She's a big fan of like a very strong, like I've seen my mom oh, pour wow. out entire pots of coffee, just be like, that's not good. It's not strong enough. So maybe I get it what? from her. Oh, man. Oh, that's, this is hardcore coffee consumption. Wow. Do you drink it black, by the way? Nothing in it? Nothing? I take a little bit of of milk, a little bit of milk, or a okay. little bit of half and half. No sugar. Okay. I used to be. I I did sugar in college, and then like not religious at all. But Made for Lynn, crazy. was just like oh. not. I'm giving it up, and it worked out. So hey, well, let's keep it going with our tea. And for me, sparkling water today. So we'll take it there. First off, Erica, how's your inbox? We like to know. Is it crazy in there with pitches or what? That uh, that's a good question. My inbox is I'm not afraid of my inbox. I have enough good stuff come out of there. Okay. Which is nice. I I am a labeler. I don't know if, if other people oh, use these. It's you- very rare. It's very rare I hear labelers. Okay, oh, so tell man. us how you organize. So mine can be sometimes it's as simple as as like whatever company it's dealing with. Like if I have somebody who like like the Pinterest PR reaches out like I have that label but I also put labels for data if somebody sends me a pitch with like numbers in it or social if it is related to you know campaigns on social platforms I did a story like on Valentine's Day so I had like Valentine's Day as one of my tags so they they really gr- like grow I think maybe once a week I'll end up with a new one but it's just because I know like that's how I'll be able to find it later. I won't remember the pitch. I won't remember the name, but I'll be like, okay, there was something and it had this there label. There was a li- label. Oh, okay. And then how many pitches do you get now? I know you're newish in your role at Digiday since January. So you're I still am. like fresh, fresh meat over there. Oh, I know. Perhaps to people. So they haven't found you yet. Maybe, maybe not. You tell us. The, it's been surprising. I, I get, I'm, I'm going to say I get maybe 20 pitches a day. Oh, okay. Not that crazy yet. Not that crazy, yet. but I would say that maybe five of them are like kind of interesting. Um, I think what's mm. weird is that I sometimes get book pitches, <laughs> like what? this upcoming author, and it'll be, you know, about like organization management or something like it's not related to huh. commerce. <laughs> so those are kind of funny. Huh. I think so far the most interesting pitch that I have gotten and didn't get to write about it, but was the uh, something about the private airline industry and like the sale and resale of private jets. Not something that I cover, but it was interesting to, yeah. to read about. What, speaking of what you cover, okay, so for people who don't know, 
you are, you know, at Digiday, we could talk about that for a second, but content and commerce is your beat. Do you want to just have a little PS, PSA on what that entails? Because maybe like that book pitcher person is like, oh, content, like that's a book. I, I don't know. Actually, I, I'm so glad that you have asked this. Yes. Yes. PSA please. to all the, the pitch folks. I want to hear from you. I do open every pitch and at least glance at oh. it. Yes. I try. I'm an, I okay. try to be an inbox zero person. So okay. I really am looking for any pitch with data in it. If you have any good, like this grew mm. year over year or like revenue is up this much in the last six months, you know, like data, data, data is yep. my friend. It is a great way to start. I think I would say there are kind of two things I'm really obsessed with lately. The first is shoppable video, like in any capacity. Video. Yeah. So like NBC universal ha- is, has like NBC checkout. Yeah. So you're watching the TV show and you're like, oh, I like those pants. Let me yes. buy them. Yes. 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 Yeah. Because they, yeah. yeah, they rolled it out with, I think, Roger Federer at the US Open, like trying to buy his outfit. I think I was talking to a colleague the other day, making the cut is like a fashion show. You can like yes. buy that. I think that, so things like that are really fascinating. And perhaps the more broad one that I am um, really digging into is like the social platforms for a and e-commerce. So like Instagram shopping, Mm -hmm. Facebook shops, Mm -hmm. really, really fascinated with how Snapchat is going to enter the e-commerce space and especially TikTok. If you've got TikTok insight, I want to hear from you. I don't fully understand TikTok, Mm. but I am fascinated by it. And I know a lot of brands are keeping keeping it it's still kind of this experimental phase but i think it yeah. really stands to to gain some ground this year if they can like crack that well now i guess nuts. that they're not going to be bought or whatever exactly under Trump administration. they're like mm-hmm. Woohoo, dodge that bullet yeah i think that's given a lot of they're like <laughs> a lot of brands and marketing teams i think have kind of been like okay this is something we can yeah really can consider now too, for mm-hmm. sure have you gotten anything on clubhouse not me personally. I know that some uh-huh. other colleagues have covered this and maybe get some pitches on it. I know what it is. I think it is interesting. Part of the audio space. Maybe that's something I should chat with my editor about and be like clubhouse commerce. I just heard it like three times a day and I'm like, I don't want to be on there. I, cannot. <laughs> I just too many things, too many things. But apparently, you know, that's all blowing up. We'll see. Could be something that just blows up. Like what was the other one? that spent all the money. I already forgot the name of it. The short video thing, the 12 minute video segments. Oh my God. It died last year. It had Meg Whitman at the helm. Quibi. Quibi. I mean, that was yes. deader than, that was dismal. Oh my gosh. So maybe it'll be like that. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. We have some audience asks, Erica. First one is from Joanne Clark Simpson. She's head of marketing called pissconsumer.com. Don't know what that's about, but Hmm. She says, do you use online reviews posted by real consumers to back up your news and research with quotes? Do you contact reviewers via online review platforms? Interesting question. You ever look at those like third party review sites for any of your stories? This is a good question. Yeah. Generally, generally, no. A lot of my reporting is maybe like experts in the industry who like somebody who runs like a logistics company or talking to media buyers, talking to agencies, or just going to brands themselves and saying, what are you thinking? The closest thing to reviews I think I have done is I wrote a piece about Reddit and how marketers could be using Reddit as part of the like buying decision funnel. And I think that's a really good, I know several, you know, good friends, myself included, I definitely go onto Reddit to read reviews of something before I buy it. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's my closest was, yeah. Okay. Going through Reddit reviews. Going through Reddit. Got it. We got another question here. This comes from Nicolette at Market Impact. She was talking about, or asking, what are you working on right now? But you covered those two areas that you're focused on. But her second question to that is, what's the best way to interest you in a story? So you mentioned earlier data. But is there anything else in like a pitch where you're like, yes, thank you. That is a pitch I want to respond to. Oh, the perfect pitch. Yeah, oh, what's the perfect this pitch? Is a, this is a good question. Yes, mm-hmm. data for sure. 
I think most pitches have this, but typically like I do like the, the, the bullet points of like, here's the exec and like, here are like the three to five key things that they can talk about. That's a really quick way for me to hone in on like, okay, what is your like area of expertise? Like, how does that fit into something I'm working on? I think also I would say if there's like a brand or like a client who is willing to maybe chat about that too, um, Mm. that would be great. So I, I guess what I'm saying, like the example I'm thinking of is if you're like a logistics company or something like that, like working on returns and you have a client who would be willing to like talk on the record, or I guess, I guess even on background, but preferably on the mm. record about like, how has that service worked for them or, you know, what's challenges they're still facing. So they're pretty rare. I think I've only ever seen a handful of those, but data is the big one, you know, just even bullet points to say like, here's who we are, here's who you could talk with, and you know, here's what you could cover. Those are always good. Today's interview will continue after this brief message brought to you by OnePitch. Are you curious to see the unique ways OnePitch helps PR professionals and marketers pitch journalists? Head to onepitch.co to learn about our new OnePitch score and see how easy it is to find the right journalist to pitch your news to. Sign up for your free account today. Now, back to today's episode. So speaking of data, does it need to be directly? And like, there's things where you're like, oh, we grew this company 517% from the, and you're like, well, okay, it's percent, you know, that's very dissuading. Mm -hmm. What, is there anything more specific? Like you want to see the actual revenue numbers. You want to see the actual, you know, started with 2000 followers, grew it to 18,000 or something. Like, is there anything else more like, you know, nitty gritty? I mean, absolutely. The, Mm. the harder the numbers, the more, you know, I guess, quote unquote, real those numbers are, the better. Although I do, I understand that there are folks who are kind of like, hey, like, we don't necessarily want this, like our, you know, our sales numbers printed. Yeah, there's that problem. Mm -hmm. But even something like that, if that could be given on background, just so like, like I'm happy mm. to put in like a percentage growth, but as long as I like we do have those actual numbers, like that helps give the story, you know, weight and credibility. It also helps with when I like bring it to my editor and can back yeah. it up saying like they didn't want this printed, but like I do confirm that these are the numbers kind of thing. What okay. else? Any or any like quirky statistics are always fun. I always love when people mm. talk about categories of things, you know, if we're like if something's like a big you know, if they work with a lot of clients or something, they may say like, oh, we've seen, you know, like furniture is starting to decline, but we're seeing growth in like skincare or, you know, mm-hmm. slippers or something. That's, yeah. I think those are always kind of fun, maybe germs of a story. How do you look at stories you come up with and do? For example, you recently did this piece on, this, that's more general. This is like brands courting customers while it's Valentine's day. So, okay. Clearly Valentine's day has come and gone, but you're like, okay, I'm going to do a story on that. But like what sparks your inspiration for specific stories and do any of those ever come from pitches? Ooh, yeah. Where, where do story ideas come from? The Valentine's day one was just because I knew that that was coming up. So some of them are like, you know, like holiday related or, I think there, I know there are a couple of big commerce platforms doing like meetings and summit. Those are always a fun thing. If, if uh, I guess another shout out to pitch people, if you have any like webinars or things, I, I really like going to those. They're always nice, a nice way to kind of like see who else, what, you know, what people in the industry are, are thinking about and chatting about. I do sometimes get things from a pitch. I I think I would say I never get like a whole story from one pitch. I think what tends to happen is I will get a pitch and like and label it. (laughs) And then maybe like the next day or two, somebody else will pitch me something and they are either very, very similar or in the same realm. And it, that's the point where I can stand out. It's, it's, it's kind of like finding a puzzle piece, but you have to like wait for the universe sometimes to give you some of the pieces. And so every now and again, I'll start seeing, you know, or maybe like in colleagues coverage, I'll see something that's like, oh, you know what, somebody I could build on that. I was chatting with somebody else about their, you know, their payment process. And could we build on that? And every now and again, 
a start of something will come from Twitter. Like, I think. Really? Yeah, okay. It's They're just floating around on Twitter or like you having DMs or something with people? I have no DMs, but please feel free to slide into my DMs. I have a lot of lists. Really? So I look at a lot of like my okay, morning list, routine yeah. is me like catching up on news from major outlets and then me on Twitter going through the lists and just being like, okay, like what are agencies putting out? What's, what are like big people in the the commerce space talking about? So sometimes it's good to like trends are a big thing that pop up in Twitter. And that's always like a great yeah. 30,000 foot view. And then maybe I can drill into that further with, you know, like a specific brand or a sp- certain company um, and tie it to something larger. So. Yeah, there's a lot. I, uh, You know what gets me down a rabbit hole on Twitter? It's like the little side column thing where you see a trending and you see a little hashtag trending or whatever. You're like, oh, gosh. It could be a slippery slope on there, so you got to watch out. Okay, Erica, I have a little fill in the word once I give you the phrase. So, Or words. It could be a little statement. So, for instance, let's start with my favorite publicist always. Oh, fact checks. <laughs> Fact checks. The most annoying publicist always follows up in the same day. Yeah, I've heard that before. You'll get a response from me if you have data. There you go. You will never get a response from me if it's not related to commerce mm-hmm. <laughs> and online commerce. Mm hmm. You can follow up with me if if you haven't heard back from me in a day. A day? Only a day. Hmm. Short time. It would be a huge help if you, publicist. I guess have read at least one previous article that mm-hmm. I've written. I think that's always, or even not just me, but like something on the Digiday thing. thing? Yeah, yeah, like something from the Digiday thing I think is always good to just kind of get a sense of what we're covering what's happening yes my perfect sunday is perfect sunday <gasps> yeah i so i live in brooklyn and i'm gonna mm-hmm. say this is my perfect sunday in the before times yes okay i would say pancakes at clinton street baking company yes yes i, I yes uh-huh and then uh, I really love the High Line. So Me too. Like, yeah, I walk up the High Line. Man, I haven't been there in a while. And then one of the museums, I know the Whitney is right there. Yes, it's right there down the staircase. I'm a member. Mm-hmm, there mm-hmm. you go. So maybe that's when like, I want I want brunch. I want to walk to walk off the brunch. <laughs> and then I want to look yes. at some art. <laughs> yes. Ooh, that's so nice. And I miss New York so much. That would be one of my favorite Sundays in New York too, for sure. The nicest thing I ever heard about my work was? Most read for the, the day or the week. Ooh, like whenever, yeah, oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that just makes my heart sing. If, I, if it's like a lot of people read this, I'm, I'm always super proud. The last best thing I ate was? I'm going to say the, like this spicy mango stir fry that my boyfriend made a few nights ago. He is becoming like quite mm. the budding chef and it was really good. I think I we all it. both, yeah, I think we were both like mango, hmm, but it was, huh. I recommend it was good. It was fantastic. Quarantine taught me that you don't need a gym. <laughs> you don't need a gym. Let's see. Oh, last one. My one piece of advice for aspiring journalists is. Okay, my first would be try to have coffee. Like I'm sure if you're an aspiring journalist, there are folks in the industry that you look up to or you follow their coverage regularly. Mm -hmm. Like try to reach out to them. Like just say like, I know it's quarantine and everything, but like, can I buy you a virtual coffee or can I just send you some questions? And can you tell me a little bit more about what you do kind of thing? I Please don't use the phrase, pick your brain. I think that's like kind of a, oh, a weird no. phrase, I but I, I think it's always nice to just say like, I'd like to learn more about your pitch process or where are some interesting sources. Um, I don't know if I would open with like, read this thing that I wrote. 
I think my next thing too, I am a career changer into journalism. So if you are an aspiring journalist and you are maybe sitting in a different industry, I highly recommend looking into a master's program. Yeah. That ended up being something for me. And like, I never worked on my college paper or anything um, and going through it was incredibly helpful to go through. Good advice. I like it. Erica, what are you reading right now? And we'll also take, by the way, listening, watching, Netflixing, whatever, whatever you got. Anything you recommend? Ooh, I am currently reading um, Pigs in Heaven by Barbara Kingsolver. Pigs in Heaven. Let me look it up. Okay. <laughs> it okay. is the, Yes. She, because she, I, th- I think a lot of people know her for the Poisonwood Bible, but the start, I asked my uh, mom what she was reading and she was reading The Bean Trees. And I thought that's just like a funny sounding title. So yeah. downloaded it and have read it and really enjoyed it. And Pigs in Heaven is the sequel to that. So fantastic. Just marked it on my audible. There Excellent. You go. Yeah, it's, it's very much, uh, I'm a big fan of fiction. I think we get enough. I think as journalists, we get a lot of the real world in our yeah, you know, right. daily lives. Mm-hmm. So very big fan of fiction. Although the last thing that I read before this was The Power Broker. And so I'm like, oh, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, someone else recommended that. Uh, Robert Caro, I think, right? Yes, 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 yes. It was a Christmas gift to me because you cannot get it on Kindle. You got to go buy that sucker. Mm-hmm. And it was very good, especially like living in New York. It was very interesting to see how much influence mm-hmm. he had on like parks and bridges that I see every day. Yeah. And this one got the Pulitzer Prize too. It has like yes. two. It's the the other thing though, and I forgot who mentioned it on the other show. But man, this is a tome. It's sixty six oh hours on yes. Audible. Sixty six. That's more than Obama's book. I was like, well, it's six to six. Okay, I'm eventually going to get to that. But wow. Okay, so you loved it. Another I, recommendation for that I, one. I I did like it. Yeah, it was it was a good quarantine read. I was like, I have so much time. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is my book. Got it. Good recommendations. I like this. What do you think about going back to what you give advice for, for journalists? What do you think the future of journalism looks like? I personally am very hopeful about the future of journalism. I think especially with everything that has happened with the past administration, the transition of power, the coronavirus, like all, you know, all of this, I think has really shown people like the importance of journalism. I mean, that's, (laughs) maybe that's just like my very uh, naive hope uh, in that. I, I do think I don't know. My, I hope that eventually we think of it like we think of like a Spotify subscription. It's just like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. like why would I not? Do. Yeah, it's just very like we already do it with whatever the five streaming services that we have. Like, okay, so you get five news outlets. Like, and yep. that's just a part of that's your, what you do. Yeah, and that's just like yeah. a, a part of you know what we're used to having. You know, on what was oh, I just listened to this today on the BBC and I was like, really? So, and this is going to date kind of this conversation. I know this will be a little bit later, but Australia was all up in arms because Facebook apparently like turned off its the news feed feature or mm-hmm. something. So people couldn't, and they were having protests and now it's coming back on and that's all fine. But I thought, what are there that many people that are relying on Facebook on the daily who would be upset if the new, I'm like, I have never, ever, obviously I'm in media, but I've never used Facebook for news. Like here's my number one source to get news. Hence that goes into the whole conversation of news sources and credibility. But yeah, I was really surprised by that. I really surprised. Yeah. That's something we've, um, I know I have some other colleagues that have been keeping an eye on that, uh, as well. Yeah, I agree. Facebook is, is not the place I would normally, you know, that's not where I go. I'm a big newsletters person. If anybody like check your, check the major sites, a lot of them have, Mm -hmm. you know, like a a morning newsletter that are free. Like that's free. Like check that out instead. Maybe not Facebook. Yeah. That, that just for me was like, Oh, is that, People so upset that they'd be up in arms having protests and stuff. I was like, what? Anyway, that's probably tied to the future journalism. So there's that. There's that. 
Okay, Erica, the last part here is for us to go through our Mad Libs, which I always enjoy. Sometimes it's <laughs> very, very accurate. And then sometimes it's not, and it's just funny or it's fun, but whatever, we will see. So, okay, are you ready? Yes. Okay. First is an emotion. Happy. Happy. An adjective. Bright. Bright. And another adjective. Dark. Dark. Okay. A greeting. Uh, Bonjour. Bonjour. A verb. Run. <laughs> Run. A noun. Dog. Dog. An adjective. Tired. <laughs> Tired. A cringeworthy PR term. Just saw the piece and... I <sighs> just saw the piece and dot, dot, dot. Part of a pitch. As you know. <laughs> as you know. Who says that? So, as you know. Yeah, sometimes they start with like, as you know, like the coronavirus has upended like the e-commerce. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, got, I got that. Length of time. A day. A day. Name of a real person, ideally alive. Christiana Amanpour. Christiana Amanpour. Oh, uh, Amanpour, like the Amanpour. Amanpour, the the reporter. I don't know why that popped into my head. Yes, Amanpour. Excellent. Okay, and another emotion. Let's go with future of journalism. Hopeful. Future of journalism. Hopeful, oh, hopeful. 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 Yeah, yes. we'll go back to the. Got you. Got you. Okay, here we go, Erica. When I think of the future of journalism, I feel happy. The pitches I receive have gone from bright to dark. <laughs> I receive a, if I receive a pitch that starts with bonjour, I run. When I write stories on dogs, I get tired. My favorite pitches include just saw the piece on and dot, 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 and very specific, as you know, dot, dot, dot. I normally take about a day to respond to my emails, but if it's Christian, who is this person again? I have a Christian, I'm um, poor. I definitely will respond immediately. If you do get a response back from me, you should know that I am very hopeful for you. There you go. <laughs> I love it. What did you think? Was, accurate? Yeah, fairly accurate. Now, and, yeah, and, fairly accurate. Yeah, that was yeah. about. I do yeah. take about a day to respond to my emails. It's so perfect. There you go. Perfect. By the way, that woman you mentioned, she's the chief international anchor for CNN. Kind of a big deal. Yes. Kind of a big that's, deal. That's that's why she, I think. British like, Iranian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Erica, that is our podcast for today. I loved it. You were fun. We learned some stuff. Include data. Make sure there's data in there, everybody, just so they know. Anything else you want to mention? Uh, no, I, I think that's it. Subscribe to Digiday. We got you covered. Subscribe to <laughs> Digiday. Yes. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Erica. So fun. And I'm definitely, now that you mentioned the power broker, that's the second recommendation from a journalist. I got to read it. 66 hours. I'm, I'm ready for it. Nice. There you go. Thanks again for being on, Erica. No problem. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Coffee with a Journalist featuring Erica Wheelis from Digiday. If you enjoy listening to our show, make sure to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. And if you have a moment, please leave us a review to share your thoughts about the show and today's guest. To learn more about the latest tools on OnePitch and to subscribe to our weekly podcast newsletter, head to our website at onepitch.co. We'll see you all next week with a brand new guest and even more insights about the journalists you want to learn more about. Until then, start great stories.